My name is Cameron DeVries. My name is Juliana. Hello, um, I'm Jordan. My name is Amelia. My name is Matt Schultz. I'm Scott DeYoung. I'm Rebecca. My name is Bethany. My name is Kevin. I am Rebecca Tim. Tell me anything you know about our theme first. Our theme is Break the Pattern, so we have to talk about how we're not going to be like everyone else and be different because that's how God wanted us to be. Uh, breaking the Pattern means um, that um, instead of following what everybody else does that could be sinning, we have to not sin. Well, it's about Breaking the Pattern. It's from Romans, and it's our theme for the year. How we are to we are commanded by God to break the pattern of this world and of its culture. And it's in the sense that we're supposed to be sending out for people to question them. why are those Christians different. And um, kind of being separate from the people around us and our culture and being like our own person. We're creating um, over the year like what you can accomplish outside of your normal borders of your friends and like um, breaking what you have done over the past several years. Okay, finish the sentence. Faith is? Hope on fire. And I actually was looking, reading the Bible about it a long ago, and I was like, oh my goodness. The Bible asks us to live by faith rather than by sight, so not relying on the material world and whatever you see, but just believing without seeing and having faith in a spiritual manner is... Faith is believing in something that you cannot see. Faith is something that doesn't come easily, but you work at throughout your whole life. Uh, faith is definitely an obstacle, I would, I would presume. Um, it's kind of stepping out on a limb and believing that he knows what's best for you. Finish this sentence. Peer pressure is? Um, falling into what you don't believe. Peer pressure is when your friends um, convince you to do something that you're not totally confident in or you're not sure that's the right thing to do. You do something that you did not initially want to do, but you're only doing it because of other people's influence. Falling into the patterns around you. Socially in a large group, a large group of people influence you personally because it's a natural thing for human beings to want to fit in. When people want you to do something and you do it because they want you to, because of what they might think about you. When people around you pressure you to do things that you don't necessarily want to do or feel right doing. Being forced to do something you don't believe in or you don't want to do. Um, what do you think a lot of peer pressure can do to a single person? Uh, I definitely think it can change um, someone. Uh, definitely not being themselves for sure is definitely a big obstacle. A lot of peer pressure can make someone lose their, themselves and kind of second guess everything they do. Peer pressure can become basically a guide for people if they start living by it rather than having the will to refuse it. It can make them unsure about themselves. Peer pressure can really like deteriorate one's self-confidence. To do things that they don't want to do and can do things that make them out of their comfort zone. Put people in dangerous situations that they don't want to be in. Is there like an age or time in a person's life when they experience the most peer pressure? I have to say that people experience peer pressure the most as an adolescent. Teens, especially in high school. I mean it can happen outside of school and both inside school, but I believe that when you're around a group of friends, um, peer pressure is most common. Um, when you're in high school probably. <laughs> peer pressure happens from the day you're born to the day you end. But I think a lot of it's in high school when people are questioning, um, you know, life or in general. About the age of 15 through 19. From middle school really all the way through university. Probably in high school. Probably during high school careers because that's when friendships and hanging out with your friends as groups is most common. Um, do you think that standing up for somebody is as important as some people say it is? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, high school is a very tough time for most people, and um, standing up for what you believe in or standing up for your friends is definitely an important role. Oh, uh, yeah, I think standing up for someone is definitely important. Is once people see that you're willing to stand up, it can spread like a wildfire, and 
your hope and faith and whatever you stand for begins to become others. It's something we should all practice. What does it mean to you to be an individual? It means to be unique and different than anyone, everyone else, because that's the way that God made you. You live your life because of the way you want to live it, not because of the way other people want you to live it. Each of us um, are different. Not, there's no person in the world that's uh, exactly the same. So I guess it's an indication of God's fingerprints in, in creation. Not really worrying about what everybody else does, just kind of wearing what you want, doing what you want, listening to what you want, just being yourself and not worrying about what everybody else thinks. To uh, make decisions on your own, um, act upon what you believe is to be the right decision. And to not go with other people's conceptions of you or how you should be acting. Have your own thoughts and beliefs and ideas and to follow them as you feel is Right. Finish the sentence. Renewing our minds means... Renewing our minds means changing the way we think about something or about a topic. Thinking more about what you are on the inside, like your feelings and um, your real morals and stuff, and then letting those things inside you, like your heart, change how you live on the outside. Having the divine impact of God's love on your life. The transformation that's taking place inside your heart and your spirit, it becomes evident on the outside. Taking what shouldn't be in our minds out of our minds. A complete transformation of old habits. Making what you believe in the inside to be true, to be showing it outwardly. A change that you have within yourself when you accept God and you people start to see the difference in you what you believe, I guess, like inside and like your morals and beliefs are shown in your actions and what other people see outside. Do you think that Jesus was an example of breaking the pattern? Jesus was definitely an example of breaking the pattern as he didn't follow like the laws that the Pharisees and the rule and the Romans set before him. He followed what God said was right? Yes, because I guess he wasn't necessarily what the Pharisees really expected. He wasn't the same kind of leader and teacher that they were expecting. He was someone who sat with sinners and people who were outcasts and accepted them, so he was different and people noticed that about him. Jesus did follow so many cultural norms, but he broke the pattern in the way he showed how Christians should act. He kind of went against everything that a lot of people believed. He did things during the times when he lived that other people didn't do. As the Son of God, a holy man and holy God, he was um, a direct representation of us as human beings. He came down to be like us, but he also showed us the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life, as he claims. So in that manner, he is the exact person we're supposed to be looking up to with how we live, how we break patterns, how we stand up to oppression, and how we be the light of the world. Because he was perfect and nobody else was perfect, so that's breaking the pattern. Jesus said a lot of things that during his time were really out there. and He did a lot of things that people had never really seen before. Do you think that because we're Christians that gives us an extra reason to break the pattern? Um, I definitely think we have a lead on others because we have the faith that we need to understand the concept of our verse. As Christians, it's important that we break the pattern because it allows us to stand out in a crowd so we can emulate God better. As Christians, I believe that it is our call to break the pattern. I think it's our duty to change to be more the way God wants us to be. Yeah, I think we're commanded to change for the better and to be more Christ-like in our actions and our life. Because we have a purpose for what we're doing. I think God wants us to be kind of different from what our society is since we have so much greed and like selfishness in our society. I guess with God's calling, God's calling, in, it is in the Bible, it's planted in the Bible, that verse, our theme verse, to break the pattern. So it is God's as, um, expectation, especially for Christians, the ones who follow Him and have devoted their life to Him, to be the light, to stand up um, to oppression and begin to. Um, brings things back to where the Bible stands.